When you think about critical infrastructure, what typically comes to mind? Do you think about the banks and the financial institutions within our nation, the things that keeps the money rolling and going all around the world? Do we think about the electrical grid organizations or the electrical infrastructure within our nations, the things that keeps the power rolling and powers our devices, things like our iPhones? Or do we think about hospital systems, right? Healthcare organizations, the things that if something happens to us, we are taken care of, or even bringing children into the world. These are the things that maybe typically come to your mind when you think about critical infrastructure. But where I wanna bring our mind to today is that of the elderly and the seniors within our nation as critical infrastructure. Do we ever think about protecting that group of individuals? That's one thing that I wanna talk about today in this video where we are talking about the seniors and the elderly as critical infrastructure. Come along where we normalize struggling in cybersecurity. Let's have this discussion. Hi, my name is Gabriel Agbarucci, and welcome back to Struggle Security, where we are normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. And it's 2023. And 2022 has been a crazy year. 2022 has had all types of hacks where it can be security organizations were hacked. Um, there was the Ukrainian Russian war, which I have a video about that and the cybersecurity attacks that emerged based upon that, taking down electrical grid and power systems. There were also security organizations like LastPass who had the, the their vaults hacked and it was just so crazy, such a crazy year that we think so much more security minded. We think so much more about hacks and cybersecurity. But as I've kind of been going into 2023, I've been thinking about some of the areas that we kind of have been left out or individuals and groups that have been left out from the cybersecurity conversation. And it brings it brought my mind to that of elders, right? Elders and the elderly within the U.S., more the Western world, because that's where I'm from, um, about how are they considered in this whole equation of cybersecurity? And as I've been doing my research, I've seen that as older adults start to embrace more and more of technology, they're becoming even more increasingly vulnerable to cyber attacks. Here, I got some stats for you. And this comes from an FBI report put out by an organization called IC3. And they give some statistics um, every single year. And this is from the 2021, the elderly fraud report. Let's, let's go to those stats right now. And it says that um, for individuals over 60, over 60 year, years old, that there are over 92,371 reported victims. There are over $1.7 billion in losses, 74% increase from the previous year of reports and losses. Um, there is an average dollar value of 18,246 loss per victim and more than 3,133 victims have lost more than $100,000, right? And it kind of then brings your mind to, okay, so if they're very vulnerable, if they're increased and they have these bill, uh, almost, almost $2 billion in losses annually, then what are the typical ways that the bad guys are focusing on this group of individuals who are vulnerable to these cyber attacks? And the top ones that I've seen, um, and we're still on the report or on some of the statistics is that of tech support, right? So the top reported number of victims, which is there at that 3,900, have been in tech support. So think about it, right? This scenario can be that of, say for instance, someone calls the house of an elderly person or senior, and they're asking them to say, hey, we wanna go ahead and service your computer. We wanna go ahead and service your machine. This can cause issues, right? We can, this can cause issues because what's happening is that because the senior isn't really informed that, hey, this person might not have their best interest in mind, they give up all types of information. They allow these frauders and these scammers to connect to their machines and steal all types of personal information, which can lead to things like the uh, data loss or data breaches, personal information breaches, healthcare records breaches, all types of these things, all because of a tech support call where the senior might have thought that that individual was an actual person from a Microsoft or an Apple. Um, so this is one of the areas, the, the top area where victims are reporting, but there's also another area that that comes from that of confidence, fraud, or romance. And this is where the top amount of losses come from, where it's over $432 million in losses that come from this type of attack where um, people might reach out or scammers might reach out to the elderly over something like Facebook or maybe even a WhatsApp or possibly Instagram. I think Facebook is probably the most common and they're starting to develop a relationship, right? But it's a fake relationship 
but the elderly might think that it's an actual relationship. The thing about this is that many times, just like I was mentioning before, the elderly and the seniors are many times forgotten. So sometimes they look to go to social media in order to kind of fill some of that conversational and sometimes a romance gap. I think that this is such a sinister way to attack individuals because people are really looking for help. People are looking to connect with other individuals and to take advantage of that is absolutely trash. So, you know, I think again, this is the top way that individuals are losing money these days. But I don't wanna just leave you with all the bad information, with all the bad statistics, because there there is help. There are organizations that are purpose to um, help out when these things things happen. One is that of the FBI with the IC3, which reports on all these different things. But there's also organizations like the AARP, right? The American Association of Retired Persons. There's a National Cyber Forensics and Training Alliance. These individuals give services like training and information about things that seniors need to look out for. Federal Trade Commission also re reports on these things. The National Cybersecurity Alliance, the NCSA, and the Cyber Crime Support Network all work to protect older adults from cyber security attacks. But I don't think that it should stop, stop there because I think that there's gaps. So these are very large organizations, national organizations, even government funded organizations, but they don't have a direct line of communication. They don't, they're not directly touching or caring for the elderly, right? Those individuals that are caring for them are people probably in nursing homes and really caretakers. Those who are caretakers for seniors and elderly in the United States are those individuals who are touching and closest to the seniors. So I think that that includes myself, right? Um, and you, right? We are closer to those who are the seniors within our lives, um, even more than these large organizations. And I think that we need to be more vigilant and take more care of that group of individuals. If we notice that they're on the phone or on the internet more increasingly, maybe start asking them questions, not necessarily invading their, their privacy or anything, but asking them questions about what some of these interactions are, right? Even us being educators, right? Letting them know, letting the seniors, the grandmothers, the grandfathers, or the great-great-grandfathers, or the great-great-grandmothers, knowing that, hey, every communication or every person that calls you on the phone is not not have your best interests in mind. So I think that there's some education that we need to do and some care that we need to take along with these organizations to really help to protect this critical infrastructure in the United States, because our critical infrastructure isn't just financial institutions, hospitals and electrical grid or electrical infrastructure. It's also those who are seniors and elders within our reach and within our community. Hopefully this has been something valuable to you. I want to do more and more content about this. Um, but again, like I say all the time, this is struggle security. Where we are normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. This is an area where we can all help out and learn more about in order to protect the critical infrastructure of the seniors and the elders within our own communities. Thank you and looking out for more. Again, subscribe, hit the like button before you leave. And again, struggle security, where we are normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. Thanks.